Um, thank you all for coming back. Hope you had coffee. Um, I'm going to talk about radiolarian dating of the pelagic sediments of the Neotetis Ocean, sediments related to ophiolites as well uh, of, from the continental margin, and implication of the datation on the uh, evolution of the Neotetis Ocean. This talk uh, relates well for, with the uh, talk of Hans-Jürgen Gavlik and also uh, with the talk of Nevenka Jeric, with, because it's from the Selm Oceanic realm. So um, my study area is uh, located around 150 kilometers east of here. So this is Ljubljana. Uh, this is Croatian capital Zagreb, and we are here. Uh, this is the area where the Dinarites meet the Southern Alps. Uh, both Dinarites and Southern Alps are uh, made out of uh, uh, rocks, sequences that originated either from the continental margin, either from the oceanic realm. Now, uh, many people have worked on this, many people in this room, room as well. However, there are still many open questions about, uh, uh, for example, what did cause the initial rifting in the Middle Triassic, how many oceans were open and at what time, and at what time did uh, the final closure of these oceans occur. Um, this is one of the paleogeographic reconstructions uh, by Stampfli and Borel. Uh, this is for the late Triassic, and this is for uh, Oxfordian. Now, this is one of the possible uh, just to synthesize one of the possible evolution of this uh, oceanic realm. This evolution uh, hypothesized that there was only one ocean that opened in the Middle Triassic and existed until the Cretaceous. So uh, in the Middle uh, Triassic, you have initial rifting with uh, spreading uh, throughout the Triassic and Middle and Lower Jurassic. Uh, Intraoceanic subduction started in the Middle Jurassic and lasted until the uh, possibly late Jurassic and earliest Cretaceous with the creation of the subduction of ophiolitic crust. And then final uh, ophiolitic emplacement started somewhere in late Jurassic and early Cretaceous um, with the closure of the ocean happening in the, um, the, in the lower, um, early Cretaceous. Uh, however, I repeat, this is only one of the possible um, explanations. Uh, traditionally, the dinarites are subdivided into two units, the external and internal dinarites. External dinarites existed during Mesozoic as a stable, vast carbonate platform, uh, while internal dinarites are composed of uh, continental margin se sequences that are shown here in uh, different shades of uh, brown as well as the ophiolites, uh, these shape, this green color, um, however. Southern Alps are composed of the, um, the same uh, sequences that originated from this. All of this originated from the passive continental margin of uh, Adria, Adriatic microplate. Um, as you can see here, while in the rest of the dinarites, these uh, Ophiolites and these continental margin successions are very well developed. North of Zagreb, due to very complicated and long-lasting te tectonics, they are exposed in, the, in, in a very uh, small area. So basically, in a few kilometers, you can find the complete uh, passive continental margin succession from the Middle Triassic to the Cretaceous, as well as the Ophiolites, uh, uh, just the Ophiolitic Melange. So the first part of my talk will be about this continental margin sequences, passive continental margin, and then uh, the later part will be about the ophiolites. Uh, some of the work is already submitted to be published, and the work on the ophiolites uh, is still preliminary. So um, I don't have any SCM pictures, but you will, you know, trust that I <laughs> did the picking. Um, okay. So this is the the geological map of the investigated area. So this is, a, again, mapped by Schmidt. This is Zagreb, and this is um, 
So north of Zagreb, the uh, pre-tertiary formations are exposed only in few um, isolated, people refer to them as Iselbergs. So they're basically uplifted basement units that uh, emerge from this Miocene to Quaternary sedimentary cover. So you can see everything here is, uh, is Miocene or younger. And then here in this few small mountains or hills, uh, you have these pre-tertiary formations. Um, our focus is on Mount Ivanščica and Strahinščica and Kunagora. I know these names don't mean, mean much to you, but uh, here is the only place where you have actually complete sequence from the Middle Triassic until the um, early Cretaceous. Everything you see here, the colors are not really so happy, but you know, this is all Triassic. Most uh, Triassic limestones or shallow or, or um, dolomites with the uh, occurrence of pyroclastic rocks as well as basalt uh, in dark gray. This part here, this is the Ophiolithic melange. Okay, so uh, first, uh, our, our project wanted to focus actually on the middle Triassic rifting. Uh, one of the open questions uh, of this oceanic evolution is what caused this middle Triassic rifting? Why did the ocean open? Uh, so we tried to uh, find as many locations where the outcrops of uh, Pyroclastic rocks are exposed. Now this is very densely forested area, so outcrops are not really good. You're very lucky if you find something and then it's very tectonized and you usually want to cry. Um, but so this is what we have found. It's actually much better than we, than we hoped. Um, these are all, all exposures of uh, so-called Pietra Verde type pyroclastic rocks that are well known from the Dolomites, from the, uh, from Hungary, from the Hungary as well. Uh, so basically the evolution of this, uh, the basement you can, you can find only in one place and these are uh, Dolomites that uh, existed, that were formed in shallow water carbonates. And then after here you have um, pelagic sedimentation. The oldest pelagic rocks are pelagic uh, limestone found only in one section that were dated first with ammonites. Um, so basically you have in the section, you have uh, the genus Flexoptichites, which is characteristic of Illyrian. Uh, however, we also found some secondary samples of genus Bulogites. This is uh, one of them, which would indicate that also during the Pelsonian you had pelagic conditions uh, in this area. Above this uh, limestone, there are resedimented uh, benthic foraminifera that are also Illyrian in age, and they prove that, that uh, during this time, uh, also the shallow water environment that ex existed in this area, and it supplied the carbonate material to the deeper part of the basin. It is well known that during the Middle Triassic rifting, and it's well documented in the Dolomites and in, the, in Hungary, uh, you have these uh, horse and graben structures. So you have, uh, you know, as you have rifting, then you have blocks of dif different subsidence. So sub some of them were submerged and some of them were still in shallow waters. So this is how you can explain the existence of uh, shallow water and uh, deep water environment at the same time. Uh, Above this level, you have only radiolarites. Um, radiolarites are found in all sections and they are intercalated, with, except for one, to be honest, here. And they are intercalated with these uh, pyroclastic rocks. So um, let me just tell you something about the pyroclastic rocks that we found. I won't get into much detail, but we, find, we found two uh, kinds. So you have uh, geochemically, you have acidic, on top and you have a basic or basaltic pyroclastic that were found on, uh, at the bottom of these uh, sections. Uh, uh, we hypothesize that this basaltic pyro, pyro volcanic and volcanoclastic rocks uh, were actually extrusions from the related to the deep rooted uh, normal faults that are associated with rifting. Uh, Pietra Verde type volcanoclastic are usually uh, associated with 
large uh, explosive eruption, er, eruptions that provided this material. However, because of the thickness of these rocks in these places, we also think that redeposition in the deeper parts of the basement also played a role in, the, in sedimentation of, this, on this ro of these rocks. Um, they, are they are rheolitic in composition, and isotopic composition indicate that as you go uh, into the younger and younger parts of this section, there is a more and more influence of the continental crust. Uh, we dated them, as I said, with radiolarians. Uh, they are not so well preserved, but they were, in, they were enough to, to make a pre precise <coughs> datations. Uh, so uh, mostly detached spines of earthly spongida were found, and uh, they were indicate the uh, characteristic of uh, Illyrian and to possibly a lower Fasanian age. Um, So at the topmost part of all of these sections, uh, we found fine grade turbidites, uh, dark gray in color. Uh, so these, uh, um, these turbidites are composed of, uh, this is mostly eroded volcan older volcanic material as well as some pelagic uh, components, uh, mostly radiolarian tests that uh, they are concentrated in this lamina of uh, coarser grain material. Uh, I was able to extract only one, uh, these radiolarians only from one samples, and you can see it's not, well, they're not so well preserved. Very broadly, you can assign them also to the Illyrian. However, redeposition is very much possible because it's all deposited as, uh, as turbidites. Um, Regionally, in, for, for example, in Slovenia and elsewhere in northwestern Croatia, uh, these kind of deposits, they contain uh, downailas, the, the bivalves, uh, and so they are dated as uh, Ladinian. So if we uh, also assume Ladinian age for these rocks, uh, there is a significant stratigraphic gap between radiolarites and, uh, um, and this uh, and the top of the section. However, this is not proven because the, the, the dating here isn't good. Um, on top of all of this, uh, carbonate, shallow water carbonates again start to, uh, uh, start to accumulate in the Ladinian or in Carnian. Uh, younger Jurassic and lower Cretaceous sediments are found only in uh, Mount Invanschica here and before they were actually mapped and they were interpreted as a part of the Ophiolithic melange. However, now during this recent work, we were able to prove that at least part of this, uh, so before believed to be blocks, are actually uh, parts of the complete succession. Um, so until the uh, Triassic-Jurassic boundary, you have uh, shallow water limestones, and then somewhere around this transition, this shallow water environment subsides and pelagic limestones start to accumulate. Uh, here you have uh, foraminifer then, uh, in Volutina liasica and also Videlina martana, which indicate uh, lower Jurassic age. Uh, for most of the lower Jurassic, the uh, pelagic carbonates and also marls were deposited. They are full of radiolarians, these pelagic limestones. However, they are all calcitized and I wasn't able yet to extract anything from them. Uh, from the middle Triassic onwards, again with some help of regional correlation, you have deposition of radiolarites. Uh, I was able to extract radiolarians only for four, from four samples and one, one locality and they are indicated for uh, they are Calovian to early Titonian in age. However, because of a, a regional correlation, we can assume, assume that the, the, this deposition of radiolarites starts even earlier in the Bajosian. Um, so somewhere in the Titonian, as already Peter uh, said in his talk, 
pelagic limestone replace the, the radiolarites. You can see here the thin, thin sections. There are, uh, the limestones, again, are full of radiolarians, however, calcitized, and there are also calpionelites here. Uh, above this, there are um, turbidites with uh, ophiolitic detritus. So um, this would be the model for the deposition of this pelagic sequence in uh, Mount Ivaštica because of this late Jurassic uh, deposition of these turbidites that contain ophiolitic detritus. We can assume distal position on the continental margin and we can assume that it was deposited in front of the advancing ophiolitic naps during the uh, abduction. Uh, some dating was done for this turbidites, uh, Baramian to Albion. However, it was not, uh, it's done with, circ uh, with circum dating uh, fission track, and it wasn't done uh, systematically in the section. It was uh, only sampled uh, randomly. So uh, it is possible that these deposits are even older. As I said before, this continental margin sequence is tectonically juxtaposed to the ophiolitic melange. And see, here you can see the new outcrop that we found. You can also see that how the area looks like in spring and summer. So basically what you can see here, that there are a few huge blocks of radiolarites and uh, blocks of basalts uh, in this shaley matrix. You can see here blocks. This is around two meters. Uh, so this is one meter, this is around two meters height. So I was able to extract radiolarians from these blocks, and they are Illyrian to Fazanian. Again, uh, earthly spongida were, uh, were found, so I was able to de uh, determine actually the same age as uh, in this vulcanoclastic, per pyroclastic uh, successions. This uh, age was also determined earlier for uh, another locality from Mount Kalnik, Spela did uh, the, the dating. And these basalts uh, that are found also in stratigraphic, below in stratigraphic contact with, um, with these radiolarites are emorb type basalts. Um, the, the matrix of Melange was dated back in 2002, just a few hundred meters from this locality with palynomorphs to early Jurassic and to Bajosian. Um, so if we just, if we can, uh, summarize, but we uh, know um, because of the existence of the continental crust in the signature in the pyroclastic rocks, we can actually assume that there was an older oceanic subduction that triggered the opening of the Beccarc basins, and we can assume that this was Paleotetis slab. Uh, it produced volcanic activity on the upper plate, um, as well as uh, extension in the uh, in the back arc. Uh, a short-lived basins opened on this continental margin and py pyroclastic rocks were de deposited there as well as radiolarites. Uh, this is in the Pelsonian and then in the Illyrian, uh, this sedimentation in this basin, con basin continued. However, uh, also the, the uh, creation of the oldest uh, of your, uh, oceanic crust uh, was was formed. So um, thank you.